I'm Olivia De Silva with the Investing News Network, and I'm here with Drew Clark, the Vice President of Corporate Development at Metalla Royalty and Streaming. So, Drew, for those who may not be aware, can you explain the royalty and streaming model and why it's a compelling option for investors? So, the royalty and streaming space uh, is, is sort of a new entrant to the mining investment space that sort of came to fruition about 15 years ago. What's unique about us relative to producers is we take no capital or operating cost risks um, when we invest in mines. We are typically taking third-party royalties and pass, passing through the cash flow through to investors, as well as buying streams on existing mines where we have a right to purchase metal at a discount to the prevailing spot price or a fixed price uh, that's typically always at a discount to the spot price. So what's unique about us is we are able to run these companies with an extremely low GNA and generate an immense amount of cash flow when you look at a revenue per cap, uh, revenue per, per employee metric. Um, take Metal for example, on a salary basis is myself and the CEO, and we generate uh, probably around $8 million in revenue this year. Um, so that's $4 million per employee. But what's more important than that, aside from being financially robust, is we have a long track record of doing accretive deals and returning capital shareholders, a track record that most mining producing companies cannot match. Okay. So Metal's focus is on gold and silver royalties and streams, but we saw some big news in the space this week with Vale signing two cobalt streaming deals. Do you think we'll see more royalty and streaming deals outside of the precious metal space in the coming months and years? I think you will. Um, Investors like the, the medium of exposure through a royalty and streaming company as opposed to buying producers. And I think with that, you're going to see companies like Cobalt 27, for example, which was part of the Volley deal, um, starting to deploy capital, as well as Glencore recently uh, partnered up with teachers to create Basecore, which is going to be a base metal royalty and streaming company. So when you start finding investors that want exposure to certain metals and you start giving them the medium to, exp- to exposure to it being a royalty streaming company, I think you'll see more and more companies doing that. And, and you know, anecdotally, you've even seen it in the, in, the, in the weed space with cannabis wheat being created. So I think you'll see more and more of that for sure. Okay. And we're here at Mining Investment North America, and you participated in a panel discussion on depletion in the development pipeline for mining companies. Can you briefly explain how this problem developed and why it's important to know about for me, and just specifically on gold, gold has always run at a sprint. It has never run at anything but 100% capacity. So every mine is always trying to pull as much metal out at a time. Um, gold is becoming increasingly hard to find projects that have scale. Um, and the larger companies are, are, quite frankly, not backfilling their depleting assets by investing in exploration. So they're now relying more heavily on M&A than they ever have. So why that would be important for investors, in my view, is finding good development projects and exploration prop- properties that have a real chance of making a discovery and likely being taken out at a premium and, and you know, rewarding investors that, that, that have that vision with, with you know, outperformance in terms of stock gains. Okay. And are there any upcoming milestones for Metallo that you want to share to close or any final thoughts you'd like to leave investors with for 2018? So Metallo's upcoming catalysts uh, that are the most relevant are related to the Endeavor mine, which is about 90% of our cash flow today. Um, we've got an updated mine plan that was just released, and we're, we're looking at internally at how to share with the market how that mine, we, we view that mine performing down the, down the road. That, at the same time, we have a pipeline of projects that we're working on, uh, on acquiring, um, and some could be very creative to investors that we're really excited about. Um, finally, on the side of Metalla, we're trading at a pretty big discount to our peers, um, and, and the street's starting to, to wake up to that. And I think pretty soon you'll you'll see some continued performance for us, um, based on the fact that we are uh, executing our plan as, as we as we laid it out uh, at the beginning of the year, and we're continuing paying a dividend to investors while they wait for us to to continue to close that valuation gap. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me, Drew, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.